Uh, thanks, Sarah. Uh, I realize that I'm being uh, dragged out for historical purposes only. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, learned to accept that role in life as I've gotten further along in my career. Um, many of you also think that the MGH is hidebound in tradition and never changes, and I hope to dispel that. Um, but I will get, start out with just a little anecdote to put my talk in perspective. Many years ago, uh, when Hermes Grillo was still alive, he and I were sitting up in the surgeon's lounge, and the chief of surgery uh, sat down next to Hermes. And I was overhearing this conversation, and he said, uh, well, Hermes, I'd like to ask you some advice. And Hermes said, well, sure. He said, what's the problem? He said, well, I did a, an Ivor Lewis esophagectomy uh, four or five days ago, and I've got a leak in the chest. He said, I'd like to know what to do for it. And, and there was a pause, and Hermes uh, paused for a little bit longer, and he looked at him, and he said, you know, quite frankly, I, I, I wouldn't know what to take because it just shouldn't happen. So, <laughs> and that was the end of the conversation, the chief of surgery politely got up and left. So that's sort of kind of the background from which uh, I come. Where's the uh, thing to advance it? Here? Oh, here it is, yeah, good. Oops, try this one. So I have no disclosures. I'm always envious when I see people, see people get up here and have this long list of disclosures because they've obviously figured out a better way to make a living than I have. I, I've never had a disclosure to dis, uh, disclose. Uh, so, even further back in sort of uh, historical uh, terms, this is taken from Richard Sweet's textbook of uh, thoracic surgery. Uh, uh, the tradition at the MGH in esophageal surgery goes back into the 1930s with uh, Richard Sweet and Edward Churchill, two uh, preeminent thoracic surgeons and towering figures in thoracic surgery. Uh, and they worked together. Uh, I think it's fair to say that Sweet was the one who did most of this, but I think the thinking was certainly a joint effort into how to perform a, a safe uh, intrathoracic anastomosis. And just to show you that we have, we do change over time, uh, in 1940, when this uh, drawing was uh, uh, put out, you can see that this is the, where they divided the stomach. And uh, uh, as I went back and looked at Sweet's textbook, uh, there was a clamp called the Suter clamp. Anybody here know the Suter clamp? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know it. Well, there's, there's one right there, and, and not surprising. Uh, Hank probably has a little more white hair than I do. Uh, because the Suter clamp disappeared from the scene. Had it stayed, my guess is we'd still be using the Suter clamp today. It allowed you to pass sutures through it in a running fashion. Uh, and that's how they close the uh, transection of the stomach. Two layers of absorbable cat gut, followed by two layers of inverting silk sutures, so four layers of closures of the stomach. Uh, I actually like the notion of more layers, so I would probably, I'm sure I would have been intrigued by that clamp. Um, and then they um, did what is really referred to as the sweet anastomosis. We refer to it still in our institution in that uh, fashion. It has been modified only ever so slightly. Um, and it starts with um, a muscular bite on the esophagus and a, another seromuscular bite on the stomach um, as the back layer, if you will, of the anastomosis. This stomach button is created in such a fashion to identify the submucosal vessels which are individually ligated, so when the time comes to remove that stomach button, uh, there's no blood obscuring your vision of uh, the various layers of the stomach. Um, it's important to put that button probably at least two centimeters away from the uh, point of division of the stomach. I usually take uh, uh, my index finger and my thumb and as long as I can put that between there, that's sort of my rough rule of uh, uh, to, as to how far to place it away from that uh, suture line of the stomach too close and you run the risk of that being uh, devascularized. I, I'm sure it has happened, but I'm not aware of it, uh, the, de the devascularization of that little island, if you will, of stomach between that and the um, transected part of the stomach. So that's the back layer, that's the stomach button. Then the next layer that they did, uh, this is just the completion of that, and you see the esophagus is still intact, so that's the, that's the true back layer, if you will, done with fine, absorbable, probably 4-0 silk sutures. Then the next layer uh, is the one layer that we have changed, but just for historical purposes. So they incise the uh, muscular uh, wall of the uh, esophagus, and then the, the, um, the 
uh, serosa of the stomach, those two layers are then uh, sewn together for the second layer of the back wall. And then the stomach button is removed. You can see down here. And the esophagus is open, the front of it. And then the third layer is an inner layer uh, showing full thickness bites of the stomach to sort of uh, uh, um, mucosa and submucosa of the esophagus. The esophagus is then transected. I feel like that commercial on TV when the little kid is showing doing two things at the same time and he gets dizzy. I'm kind of getting dizzy running both the, the, the uh, uh, pointer and the uh, advancing the slides here. I've got to keep them straight. So then you transect the uh, esophagus. And then the inner layer is an inverting layer taking zero, uh, uh, full thickness bites. Um, well, this is not yet, this is the old one. So this is the uh, inner layer is the uh, uh, mucosa, submucosa of both the esophagus and the uh, uh, st uh, stomach seen here in an inverting fashion. Each stitch is then dunked and you do that circumferentially until you've completed that layer the second layer then is um, uh, muscle of uh, esophagus and seromuscular bites of the stomach. And then the third layer is just repeating that layer. So they have three layers and doing an esophageal anastomosis. And this technique is then, even here you can see, uh, incorporating a little bit of momentum to cover the anastomosis, which Sweet made a point of mentioning whenever it was available, he would use that to cover his anastomosis. And so this was uh, presented in 1942, truly in the sort of the very infancy of esophageal surgery. And this was regarded as a landmark paper, even though there were only 10 patients, 11 patients in it. Uh, but you can see the overall worldwide mortality at that time of intrathoracic esophagectomies, 40 to 70 percent, many leaks, many complications and problems, and they had no leaks in this uh, group of 10 patients. This was followed up with uh, this, the personal series. There are other surgeons who came into play into this, but it basically represents uh, the sort of longitudinal experience within the institution of the sweet three-layered technique. It had probably changed in the late 70s. Uh, but uh, most of this represents Sweet's work, his technique, this three-layer approach. And you can see these are the results that they got uh, through that 30-year uh, period of time. And I would say they're certainly reasonable, acceptable, and maybe even outstanding uh, by today's uh, results. That technique was then really modified by the time I was a resident. It became a two-layered technique. The one layer that was eliminated is that middle layer, sewing... Uh, um, uh, to the edge of the cut edge of the stomach to the uh, esophageal muscle. So the back row is just the same. It's seromuscular uh, bites on the stomach and muscular bites. These are horizontal mattress stitches. Usually it's five or six stitches to create the back row. The stomach button is handled in exactly the same fashion. It's removed and then the inner layer which is full thickness bites on the stomach, taking all layers. You got, I usually put a marking pen to create that uh, button so they can always see the serosa. Without the serosa, it's not a reliable anastomosis, in my opinion. Uh, and then kind of uh, mucosa and submucosa of the esophagus. That inner layer uh, is all done with knots on the inside, inverting as you go so that you turn it all in. The last stitch is sort of a canal type stitch. And then the final layer is uh, muscle of the esophagus to seromuscular bites of the stomach. Uh, the high point of this was a paper, one of the first papers I uh, presented when I was back at the MGH. Uh, uh, 104 consecutive uh, patients, all with intrathoracic anastomosis. These are thoracoabdominal, some Ivor Lewis esophagectomies. No leaks. Five. Uh, strictures to John's point in the pre-chemotherapy radiotherapy days uh, that was sort of what we had anticipated was about a 5% anastomotic stricture rate, 3% mortality and the conclusion is that an acceptable rate really I think acceptable is zero but you tolerate up to a 5% leak rate uh, as being a measure I think of uh, uh, the success of your anastomosis. So highly reproducible uh, these were almost always done by residents with the 
um, supervision of the attending staff, that's still the case. Uh, very precise, very demanding, very uh, particular about how it's done. But if you thought about the operating team, the, certain, the thoracic resident should be the least experienced and yet they can produce this kind of a result with careful guidance. So I, I think it speaks to the reproducibility and durability and outcome of that uh, technique. Uh, this is more recent taken from the uh, STS uh, database, uh, our experience uh, with these kinds of anastomoses over a three year period of time. Uh, and you can see that it's still pretty good in the sense that we have a, a very low leak rate. Uh, two of these were handled just conservatively with observations. These did require intervention. And to the point about strictures, uh, this is sort of what we see now. And in my mind, the difference is the neoadjuvant therapy component, I think, makes stricturing uh, a little bit more of a problem. And it's in the 20 to 25 percent range now. So it is an issue. But I, if you take those two series, to me, it's related to the uh, use of uh, neoadjuvant therapy, which most of these patients have had. I would also like to then acknowledge Jim Lukatic, who took one of our young surgical residents under his wing, brought him to Pittsburgh, treated him like one of his own, and uh, made such an impression upon him that uh, this became kind of his, the focus of his professional life, Chris Morse, uh, who has adopted Jim's techniques. Uh, and uh, adopted them so well that he has done an outstanding job and is probably the busiest esophageal surgeon now in the group. And uh, much to my surprise, when we looked them all up, he had no leaks using these circular staplers. So I, I have to admit that uh, the ease of doing it and the reproducibility of it and the ability to get that kind of a, a leak rate of somebody who just came out of training uh, after being taught by, uh, I'd say, the preeminent uh, minimally invasive surgeon in the world. Uh, granted, that's a, a, a recipe for success, but nonetheless, his uh, results are truly uh, remarkable. No leaks, and I've forgotten how many he's done now, close to 80, I think. Uh, really speaks of our willingness to uh, change with the times. And some years ago, uh, when I was looking up a series with one of the younger staff uh, had to do with myotomies, uh, drainage uh, pyloral myotomy. And I said to him, I said, well, you know, it's going to not be a very valid study because I know everybody does myotomies, and so there we have no comparison group. And he kind of looked at me and paused and was silent, and he, I said, well, what, what, what's the matter? He said, well, in fact, you're the only one who still does a myotomy. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have stopped asking what the rest of the group does because they all think on their own and they all do what they think is right. And I think more and more of our surgeons, I haven't really come up with numbers, uh, staple these anastomoses for all the reasons that you've heard today. So uh, again, this talk probably needs to be saved because you probably won't hear anyone else up here in the near future talking about hand-sewn anastomoses. Thank you very much.